Okay, well, I started doing pendants um, oh, about a year or so ago. I took a class with Jeff Hornig, and he was teaching the Morocco Blue Bowl, which uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. But using spiraling tools takes some practice. So I came out to the shop. Now let me show you what a Morocco Blue Bowl is real quick. This is the Morocco Blue Bowl. And we get rid of that and go back to that. There. Okay. Nope. What happened here? Three. And there. Okay. This is a Morocco Blue Bowl. You can see that it's just full of different textures and spirals and all kinds of stuff going on in it. But in order to do that, I had to learn what each tool would do when I put it in the wood while the wood was spinning. So um, I came out to the shop, put a little hunk of wood on the lathe, and just started sticking tools into the wood at various speeds and various angles to see exactly what I would get when I put that tool into the wood. And started getting some patterns that I kind of liked. So my wife does jewelry uh, as a hobby. So I thought, well, I could make some pendants out of those. They weren't bad looking. So that's how I started making pendants, just as practice for learning how to use spiraling tools. Let me show you a little bit about some of these spiraling tools. Uh, we'll switch over here to the, this camera. This is a Robert Sorby spiraling tool. And you can see that these are very, very sharp points. And this one's beveled on both sides. So when I use this tool, I'm going to get a particular pattern they call orange peel. And I like that for various reasons. Now that particular tool also comes with three other gears. And those gears are, again, real sharp. This is a real fine pattern on this one. This one's a real open pattern. And again, it's very sharp. And this is kind of a median pattern. And you have a set screw in the middle of that big tool that you have to take out and then take the, the bolt out and change it out all the time. I'm still looking for somebody to make me new handles. Then you've got the Robert Sorby mini tool. This is a real favorite of mine. I use it a lot because it makes lots of different textures depending on how you present it to the wood. This one, you don't have a bolt to take it through. You've got this curled knob. And if you have this tool, and a lot of people do, uh, this knob is on the wrong side when it ships to you. It's turned around over here. And what happens is, is you put this into the wood, it will unscrew this knob. And that's very dangerous. So what I've done is just take it out, turn it around, screw it in the other way, Actually, you take this out, turn the, the gear over, and then put it back in so that the gear is presented this way rather than that way. And then it won't untwist. It just, as, it, as it goes, it kind of locks it in. Um, other spiraling tools. These are a couple of curled knobs. They each make a, a different pattern. One's a little wider than the other, depending on what you want. 
This one is a Robert Hope tool. Uh, I got I had to order this from England from Hope Woodworking. Now you notice this one's not nearly as sharp as the Sorby tools. So it leaves a completely different pattern. And this tool goes together a little differently. The, the gear is actually captured in there. You can't get that gear out. But there is another piece. So instead of taking the gear out, you unscrew this whole top end and there's another one that screws in with a different gear in it. So it's a little different in the way that he's made these. Uh, another one of the little tools that I like to use is this one. A lot of people have this one as well. There's a bearing in there that allows this thing to spin very freely. And that makes a nice pattern as well. The large spiraling tool from Robert Sorby uh, comes with this platen attached to the bottom of the tool so that you can put this on the tool rest and have a captured bar system when you're doing it. I never use this. I never put the, the tool in that direction to the wood. I, it's always at some angle or another which is why you have to learn how to control the tool. So I put the, the platens off. Um, I'll show you just a little bit of some of the, the patterns that I do. This is a little pendant, uh, kind of a dark red. This is more a lighter red. It's highlighted with some what colored wax and this is my starry night series that i've been doing um, and that makes a real pretty pendant as well so once you get the tools and you don't need a lot of them you just need a few you can start playing with them and figure out exactly what you want to do with it and how you're gonna present it to the wood. So I've got a little hunk of wood on the lathe. Um, I've domed it off just slightly, uh, did a little bit of sanding on it, not a whole lot. And uh, I'll go ahead and we'll put a spiraling tool in there and we'll see exactly what we can get with the, uh, uh, looks like I get that camera turned a little bit. Okay. I'll back this one off just a bit. I'm going to present the tool at an angle. I'm going to start dead center. And we're going to present this tool at an angle and then spin it across. And I'm, what I'm Planning on having when I get done is a spiral right here in the middle. As far as speed goes, you don't want to go real fast. I like to go at what I, I figure that's around 450 to 500 RPM. I don't have a readout on my way, so I can't tell you exactly what it is. But we're going to present the tool, watch the gear spin, and spin it out. And I'm putting some pretty good pressure on it because I want a nice cut. And we've got a pretty nice spiral in that. What I like to do is define what I've done. So I'll use a point tool, a um, little point tool, tri three, three sided. Uh, this one I make, it's an aluminum handle with some hose on it. I've drilled and tapped here. I can twist it. I can pull the little tool out. Other end is a scoochie gouge. Uh, show you what that looks like. Those of you who do 
finials and small things, these little scoochie guys just work real well for that. It's like a fruitless gouge. So we're going to go ahead and we'll define that pattern. By taking the tri-point tool and just drawing a line around it. So now I've got the spiral pattern with the line around it defining it. So I've still got some room on that, so we decide what we want to do. I think we'll use the small curling knob. Now when you're doing this one, you have to present the tool at an angle, the same angle as the slope of your pendant. Otherwise you'll get a pattern on one side and not a pattern on the other. So we'll take this in, get it started. Just put a little bit of pressure on it. Made a nice little pattern, and we're going to go ahead and define that one as well. Okay, so with three tools, three different spiraling tools, we've made the face of the pendant. So, what I usually like to do now is go ahead and Get ready to part it off. So we'll at least get the, the start of that done. Good. And I'm going to just take just a little bit of sandpaper and sand that edge. So it's there. Now we need to put some color on it. 